And now it's time for Southern California's sports fishing voice. Let's talk hookup. For the next two hours, join Pete Gray, rock cod Rick Maxa, and this week's special expert guest for fishing information, new techniques to catch more fish, and the most current scoop on what's happening in the water. Let's Talk Hookup is sponsored in part by Yamaha Outboards, official motor sponsor of Let's Talk Hookup, Royal Polaris, the world's finest long-range sports fisher, by Ford, the official truck of Let's Talk Hookup and Shimano Rods and Reels. Fish with the best, Shimano. Get ready for the fastest two hours on radio with the hosts of Let's Talk Hookup, Pete Gray and Rock God Rick Maxa. Good morning, Anglers, and welcome to Let's Talk Hookup. I'm Pete Gray with Rock God Rick Maxa. We're in the Mighty 1090 studio with Captain Ryan Bostian from the San Diego out of Seaport Sport Fishing. We're going to be talking tuna and yellowtail and more. With the man, Captain Bastian, right here on Southern California Sport Fishing Voice, it's Let's Talk Hook Up on the Mighty 1090. Spring fishing is finally here. Will it be another banner season? Will it even be better than last year? Will it cool off? Who knows? Fishing is one thing that's impossible to predict. But when it comes to trucks, it's easy to predict who's going to be number one. Ford F-Series, America's best-selling trucks for the last 40 years in a row. Today's Ford trucks combine legendary toughness and state-of-the-art technology, giving you the best of both worlds. That's called being California smart. Ford has put it all together with the F-150 STX package. These trucks are nicely equipped with an EcoBoost engine, hands-free system control, Controls, a reverse sensing camera, 20 inch wheels, and a lot more. All at a price you're going to love. Now, I can't always predict what the fish are going to do, but I can predict that Ford is going to be on the top once again with trucks like the 2017 F 150 STX package. It's California Smart. Stop by your San Diego County Ford dealer today. They'll be glad to hook you up. The Sport Fishing Association of California is taking a leadership role to broaden the fishing opportunities for Southern California anglers. And Saturday, April 29th, Rock Cod Rick will be traveling to Mazatlan, Mexico with the president of SAC, Captain Ken Frankie, and his staff to host a live broadcast from the El Cid Marina and Resort in Mazatlan. The broadcast will feature some key personnel from Mexico fisheries and help strengthen the ties with the sport fishing fleet in Southern California and Mexico. They will also discuss the great fishing opportunities available in Mazatlan. SAC's mission is to promote tourism through marine recreation and educational activities while protecting ocean resources. By working together with Mexico, we can show our care for the resources both at home and across the border. Tune in Saturday, April 29th for a very special live Let's Talk Hookup broadcast from Mazatlan, Mexico with the Sport Fishing Association of California. Check CaliforniaSportFishing.org. Great boats, free parking, and a fully stocked tackle shop. Just a few of the reasons Seaforth Sport Fishing is a favorite among anglers. Come aboard top charter boats like the Aztec, Cortez, Endeavor, Eclipse, Apollo, Outer Limits, Pacific Star, El Gato Dos, Alexis, Pride, Privateer, Tribute, Pacific Voyager, and the Voyager. Plus, the new Seaforth Sea Watch in San Diego offer the finest half three-quarter and full-day trips available. Check out the full-service tackle store at Seaforth Sport Fishing. And it's all run by fishermen for fishermen. 1717 Quivera Road, just off Mission Bay Drive in Mission Bay. Book online at SeaforthLanding.com. Bluefin tuna are here, and now is the time to take advantage of this amazing bite. The hot jig last year and this season is the Shimano Butterfly Flat Fall Jig. It's a totally new concept of butterfly jigging, but deadly effective. Best part, it's very simple to fish the Shimano Flat Fall. Drop the jig down to where the fish are holding, then crank it up 30 feet and then freeze spool. Or cast the jig and let it fall while in freeze spool. Wait for the bite, then put it in gear and wind. It's that easy. The Shimano Flat Fall is a center balance jig and falls with a wobbling action in a horizontal position, making it irresistible to big bluefin tuna. Hundreds of big fish have been caught on the Flat Fall, ranging in size from the 130 gram to the 250 gram. They're back in stock now at your local Shimano dealer. So get yours now and go catch a fish of a lifetime on the Shimano Butterfly Flatfall Jig. See your local dealer or check Shimano.com for all the details. Welcome back to Let's Talk Hookup on the Mighty 1090. It's going to be a fun show today, man. Yeah, indeed it is. Captain Ryan Boschin from the San Diego. Good morning, Booger. Morning, Pete. Morning, Rick. Morning. Good to have you in the studio here. And uh, what is going on in San Diego? You were actually on the water yesterday. 
Yeah, about eight hours ago. <laughs> eight <laughs> hours ago, yeah. And then we drag you out of bed early in the morning here to come in and talk to the listeners here. Yeah, I really enjoy it. It's It's been a, a weird, another weird fishing, no fishing spring. Yeah, it's April, and we've been offshore for a month already. A month. <laughs> Catch a month. Uh, Catch. Has that ever happened before? I don't think so. No, not that I can remember. We got a little taste of it last year when those bluefin showed up in early April. Uh, but this year, it, it's we've been out there longer. You know, last year we weren't out there very long. It was a couple weeks, and then we went back to the islands and started fishing yellowtail. But this year, we've been offshore for a month already. Started out with yellowtail on kelp patties and a little bit of bluefin tuna. Now it's kind of transitioning into we're not seeing much yellowtail on the kelps, but we're seeing more bluefin. And we've had some bluefin frustration this week in particular we did have a good day we caught 54 of them on tuesday there was good fishing the, the tuna let their guard down for a day ha. the liberty had limits for 12 people we had 54 of them for 28 people the pacific queen had limits they just yeah, I, let me make this note the Pacific Queen had limits with Bob Fletcher on the boat. That's saying something. Yeah. Yeah. So that shows so, you how active and aggressive the fish yeah. were that day. Yeah. Now, Dart <laughs> wanted me to be sure to let everybody know that the black the black cloud is off. Yeah. How did he do on the trip before that, on the tribute? Well, I guess he didn't talk about that one. <laughs> I, I know, but I'll let him tell the story. Okay. All right. <laughs> but uh, anyway... There's no lack of tuna, right? There's no lack of tuna. You know, what What I tell the guys on the boat is, you know, we are fishing for the for the toughest fish no that, that we target. Period. You know, uh, of any fish that we target, bluefin tuna are by far the toughest. I'm, I'm pretty convinced after being around them now for the last two years as much as I have, I'm pretty convinced that they're smarter than us. <laughs> <laughs> so let me ask you this. What is more frustrating? Sea lions at the Coronado Islands or bluefin tuna? Ooh, that's a toss-up. It, it, <laughs> it's it's got to be the sea lions, though. Yeah, yeah it's got to be the sea lions. But I but I tell you, you know, these bluefin, they are they go into so many different modes. You know, they right. they go into a mode where they're boiling around, making a big show around the boat, but you but you can't get a bite. Then they'll go into a mode where they're not really boiling, but you can catch them. Then they'll go into a mode where every time you get close to them, they dive down to 400 feet and swim away. Then they'll go into a mode where they're eating anchovies, and it doesn't matter what you throw at them. You can't get a bite, they're, but they're boiling everywhere. It's They're so, so smart. And then when you do hook them, they fight very, very strange. I've yeah. never seen a fish that actively tries to bite the line off. We've seen them down at deep color, and they're shaking their head and cha-cha-cha, chomping at the line, trying to bite the line off. It's yeah. it's really weird. That's why when you use an artificials, heavy line, right? At least a heavy line leader. You know, they'll they'll bite through 80 pounds, 60 pounds, 50 pounds, no problem. You know, we when the guys are using the jigs and the poppers and stuff, and, and we're fishing those 100-pounders, you, you know, anything over 50 pounds, really, when we're fishing the poppers and the jigs for them, we always tell the guys to put an 80-pound leader on yeah. it, at least, because Rick's seen it, you've seen it. They, they'll chew through it. it. Fluorocarbon make a difference? Leader having the fluorocarbon versus mono? It does. It does. Even on the flat falls and something you wouldn't think would make a difference, you know, a lure sinking fast down deep, a fluorocarbon leader helps for everything with bluefin, I believe. For you know? abrasion resistance. Not, yeah. the, not the visuality. I it, think it's both. Is it? Okay. I, I think it's both, yeah. But abrasion resistance for sure. Um, they're just strange. You know, we have a lot of bluefin bites where it's touchy fishing and you have to use a small hook. And the difference between a size 1 and a size 2.0 live bait hook, when you look at it in your hand, I mean, it's it's a yeah. tiny difference. I mean, it's a hook uh, a quarter inch compared to a hook of uh, three-eighths of an inch. You know, it's tiny. It's a tiny it's, difference. It's one of those things in your mind. There's no way that can make a difference. Yeah, there's, can't. there's no way this hook size could make a difference in the amount of bites I get, but I'm telling you, it does. It, it just does. That's what Dart told me. He said the, the, he got his limit using number two hooks. Yes. On nice size sardines, too. Nice size sardines and nice size fish. That day Dart was out where the Pacific Queen had limits. I mean, it was right at a 30 pound average. Those wow. are Those are not small fish. Yeah. Those are not 15 pounders. You know, they're a nice size fish. To, to land one on a size two hook is. 
you you look at the size of the fish and you look at the size of your hook and you go, no way, it's not, it doesn't match. That's something to, to talk about, too, because I think a lot of people don't realize the size of the fish that are being caught right now. I had a lot of people, you know, that would call the shop and ask about getting ready and, you know, we talk about gear size or whatever, and I think a lot of people are under the impression that most of this fish is, you know, early season five-pound footballs like we've caught in, you know, hot water years past. It's not the case at all. It's all nice ones. It's all nice ones. You know, we're actually uh, pretty excited when we see the smaller grade right now <laughs> b- because they're landable, and the smaller grade is right at a 30-pound average. You know, there's some that are 20 pounds. There's a couple that might be 18 pounds. Most of them are right at 30 pounds, and and every day that we've caught them, we've had some 40s in there also. And then there's a lot of days like yesterday, we never saw a fish under 50 pounds. Whoa. It was yeah. straight. And you saw 100 pounders. Oh, yeah. It was straight 50 to 130s, and we were running on schools of them all day long. Wow. wow. And at the end of the day, you, we had none. <laughs> we, we never got a bite. It's crazy. So it's it's from a captain's point of view, it's it's really frustrating because, you know, at the end of the day, you're telling yourself, man, we've been on fish all day. This is These are the days we have our big days when we're on fish from morning till afternoon. And at the end of the day, you have nothing. Nothing wow. to show for it. Yeah, nothing to show for it. But, you know, that'll change. That sure. the, They'll let their guard down again. And, and what, what makes it change? Have you figured that out? No. Okay. No. <laughs> Not even a... <laughs> tide, weather... I, I think of any of the fish that we target, I think there is some moon influence in there. Um, it's, I'm not really a moon guy. I don't study the moon. I don't go back in my logbook and see that when we had our good days and what the moon was like. There are guys like that in the fleet. You know, I, I go out there and just fish my hardest every single day and let the, the chips fall where they may, but... Sure. I think of any fish that we target, there is some moon influence in there. You know, the one thing I've seen is during a full moon, every fish that we fish for seems to be on a schedule. You know, that you can almost uh, bank on it what time they're going to get active, what what time they're going to be, you know, in a defensive mode where you just can't catch them. And like yesterday, the very first school that we tried to fish, we had to chase it on our sonar for at least a quarter mile. We had it in front of the boat. We had it 200 feet in front of the boat. It was a big school, you know, a 1,000 fish probably at least. Right in front of the boat, looks like we're going to run over it. I tell the chummer to start chumming, and it just stays in front of the boat. I would kick the motors up. It would kick the motors up. The no whole kidding. The yeah. whole school. We had to chase it for at least a quarter mile to get this thing to where we could get some sardines on it and maybe get it fired up. And as soon as I saw that, I went, oh, boy, we're in trouble. They're in, they're, <laughs> they're in a weird mood today. Yeah. They just go into these modes where you can't catch them. And you never saw that fish on the surface or any indication other than on your sonar? Yesterday? Yeah. No, we saw it up on the surface, oh, spl- splashing around. But the very first school that we saw was a sonar school on turnbirds. Yeah. And I oh, could just, turnbirds. yeah, I could just tell by the way that they were acting that they were in a mode that wasn't going to be susceptible Oof. to taking any home. Frustrating, <laughs> is it? Gosh, very, that's great. Yeah. Yeah. Very, very, very frustrating. That day we caught 54, we had a similar type situation. We saw turn birds. We drove over there, big sonar school. We didn't have to chase it at all. It just laid there and let us drive right over the top of it. The first sardines that hit the water were boiled on. We had a couple fish hooked within five seconds. It was like, oh, okay, they're, they're kind of acting normal today. Or acting, you know, what how we want them to act, and we see that a lot. Where you just have to chase them around. You hear captains all the time on the radio. Man, we saw a nice school here, but they tried to dodge us. It was a real pain in the butt to get over. It, they're they're smarter than us. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty interesting fishing, though. And here we are, still in mid-April. Still in mid-April. Yeah. yeah. Now, what about the yellowtail? There was really good yellowtail fishing there for a while. What happened? Yeah, I think uh, the fleet might just be off of them a little bit. You know, they were moving around, um, you know, within a 40-mile block. And once this bluefin showed up and guys started making some catches on them, you know, the queen, had he's had limits two days this year. Once guys started making catch on those catches on those, we had to kind of switch our attention to the, to the bluefin, and we I think we've lost track of the yellowtail, or they've swam away. It's, it's, we don't know yet. So. What about the Coronado Islands? This is kind of the Coronado Islands this time of the year is normally your mainstay. Hasn't been this year. It, water's cold and dirty there. Is it? Yeah, but but getting better every day. Okay. So I looked at a water picture last night, and the Mission Bell has a charter on Monday 
that they're going to fish the Coronado Islands, and that'll be a real good check because okay. Steve Peterson is very, oh, yeah. very good at the he Coronado Islands. Stuff, yeah. Good everywhere, especially good at the Coronado Islands. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting season. Very, very interesting. Yeah. yeah. There, there is no normal anymore. Uh, yeah. Crazy. No. It's, <laughs> it's really. So let's ask the proverbial question, the A word. You think we're going to get him? I heard a rumor last night. Was there one caught yesterday down south somewhere? Don't know. I, I got a text message from a friend that's very connected in the industry, and he told me that there was one caught down south yesterday. At this point, still a rumor. I don't know. but That would be where we want to catch them yeah. instead of north. Right? We're, we have, yes, yes. We have the trolling feathers in the water all the time. I'm actually surprised that we haven't caught one yet, you yeah. know, that someone hasn't caught one. Water temperature looks good for it. The only thing I see that might be a little weird is we don't have that classic albacore purple water yet. It's still blue-green, you know, real good color for bluefin, real good color for yellowtail, but we don't have that classic albacore purple color water yet. If the water turns classic albacore purple blue, do the bluefin go away? Does it make them harder to catch? What What's I, the story? I doubt they go away, um, but... I think it would make them harder to catch, yeah. I haven't been doing it long enough, fishing bluefin, to, to, to answer that question. But it, that'd be a good question. Next time I see someone like Ted Dunn or, yeah, or yeah. Frank Lepresti, I'll, I'll ask them, you know, what yeah. their experience is in the past. I remember back in the day that bluefin used to always be such like the elusive thing. You couldn't get it, and they... I remember always hearing of guys being happy when it mixed with albacore because they said, that, well, it's just like anything. It's like any fisherman excuse or, or victory. Like if you caught them well, it's because they mixed with albacore and they decided to bite like albacore. And then when you couldn't catch either, it's because the albacore mixed with the bluefin and then they bit like that. So I guess, it, you know, it's just like anything. You caught them because it was a full moon or you didn't catch them because it was a full moon, one of those things. But you sure. always hear people talking about, well, when those two things mix up together, they, they tend to bite better, but... When you missed them, you just, it's because they, well, it's because the albacore are acting like bluefins now because they're all mixed up and they don't bite as good. So who yeah. knows? Well, yeah. tell us about the San Diego. And some, most of our listeners, of course, are familiar with the San Diego to see fourth floor fishing. There may be some new people that uh, tune in don't, uh, that aren't. So Yeah, well, the San Diego does the 530 departure run out of Sea Fourth Sport Fishing. And it's, you know, on the website and stuff, you'll look and it's listed as a three quarter day trip. But to the people in, in that have ridden the boat and the people, the locals here in town, they it's not really a three-quarter day trip. It's more of a full day trip. You know, we always have two captains on the boat, uh, most days three, some days four. So we're able to stay out longer than 12 hours. You know, yesterday we got back at 7.30. Ooh. And like you mentioned earlier, our bread and butter is the Coronado Islands. That's typically where we fish for yellowtail, barracuda, calico bass. But, you know, if there is offshore fish available within our range, and for the most part our range is 50 miles, that's where we can comfortably fish. We've fished 60 before, but we really don't get much fishing time when we have to go 60 miles. So if there's offshore fish within 50 miles, we'll be on it, whether it be yellowfin tuna, bluefin tuna, yellowtail, we try to keep our passengers around the best available fishing. And we model our business after the long-range boats. We have a fish hold. All your all your fish are going to be dropped into 30-degree refrigerated seawater. Nice. Yeah, it's not, every fish is bled that comes over the rail. Your, your catch is going to be in good condition. We have a full-service galley on the boat. Great. It's, uh, yeah. it's a great uh, introductory offshore trip. You know, if guys are looking to go on a two- or a three-day trip, They've never fished offshore before. They want to see what it's all about. It's a good way to get your feet wet. You know, you'll, you'll get a taste of it. Yeah, I want to sleep in your own bed that night. You right. Know, it's kind of a you can. It's a long day, but by gosh, you can get out there and get to where the fish are. Yeah, we you, we don't get as much fishing time on the grounds, but if the fishing situation is right, a lot of times offshore you don't need much yeah. fishing time. You know, most days, whether it be a one day trip, a three quarter day trip, a two day trip, most trips are made on one stop you guys see that all the time whether you're on a day and a half you know it's one stop one opportunity that stop might be a four-hour opportunity but it's usually one stop so the value of going on the san diego too is what always impresses me i mean you know what it costs in general to go catch a tuna offshore on most other opportunities that just the value of going on the san diego is so so good like you say the fishing can be fantastic and and you know and, and the other thing that i really like too is 
you know, it's one price and everything's taken care of. You know, there's yes. a, there's obviously there's you know we all know there's a lot more requirements to fish you know in Mexican waters now before than there was. But when you go on the San Diego, you can just know that everything is handled. The office staff at Seaforth is awesome and just. You show, parking. Yeah, you show up with your passport. Yep. Everything is handled. Yep. And for these offshore trips, uh, it's we do not need passports right now. Or FMMs. Or FMMs. Yeah. So that's a week to week decision. You know, that's a very popular question that I get on our our Instagram and Facebook and website and stuff. Is do we need passports? And the only thing I can say is is call the landing because that's a week to week decision. You know. If the fish are inside of the 12-mile line, we'll have to buy FMMs, which means you'll need a passport. If the fish are outside of 12 miles, then we will not need FMMs, which means you will not need a passport. Now, you mentioned Instagram, Facebook. I follow what you do every day, get the fish report. You, I don't know how you do it. When you get back that late, you still post your catch that day on your Facebook and Instagram. How do you connect with the San Diego on Facebook or Instagram. It's uh, thesandiego.com is the website. Uh, I think our Instagram is SD Fish Report. I think it's, it's under that. But you, if you go to our website, www.thesandiego.com, you can get linked up with all that stuff. Facebook and All the Facebook all and Instagram. Yeah. yeah. Perfect. Well, as you can hear, we have a great show lined up for you today. Tons of information from one of the best in the biz. Right? You're not kidding about that, boy. And so tough to get a guy like Captain Ryan Boschin off the water. So we're excited to get to talk fishing for the next couple hours. We want to hear from you. Lots of great information coming your way on Let's Talk Hook Up. And if you want to join us, there's two ways that you can do that. First is with our local line, which is 858 area code 457 1090. Again, 858 457 1090. That's our local number. Or call us toll free. That toll free line is 877 792 1090. Again, 877 792 1090. Not only going to be taking your phone calls, not only talking all kinds of fun and fishing aboard the San Diego this morning, we're giving away a great prize. We're going to be giving away two three quarter day trips to go fishing aboard the San Diego. Get in on this great bluefin fishing, yellowtail fishing, all the great stuff that's going on. You are going to get to go fishing aboard the San Diego. How about that? Again, if you want to get your chance to talk to Captain Ryan or your shot at winning one of those two passes, 858 857-1090 457-1090 or 877-792-1090. When we come back, we're going to be taking your phone calls. Lots of great information coming your way. You stay tuned. You're listening to Southern California's Sport Fishing Voice. It's Let's Talk Hook Up on the Mighty 1090. Fisherman's Landing is the top choice in local and long-range fishing. Hi, this is Doug Kern. Our hardworking crew is always looking for ways to improve your fishing experience. We offer the finest open party trip from one to three days the best charter boats available and of course our world-renowned long-range fleet is second to none we are proud to say fisherman's landing is now a full service sport fishing operation offering half day trips on the dolphin and now for the first time in the long history of fisherman's landing we have three quarter day open party trips on the liberty we built the liberty specifically to offer a better experience run by veteran captain taro takeuchi the 85 foot liberty is the first open Open party three-quarter day boat to offer bunks for your comfort. She also has huge bait capacity and RSW fish holds to keep your catch fresh. Plus, Liberty has a big galley and two interior heads with showers. Our open party trips from half day, three-quarter day, or one to three day trips can be easily booked online at fishermanslanding.com or give us a call at 619-221-8500. I'll see you at Fisherman's Landing in San Diego. You've heard all about it. You know the anglers catching fish have it so what's holding you back it's a fact fishdope.com really does help you catch more fish and burn less fuel fishdope.com is the only fish finding service with a spotter plane along with a crew of top anglers on the water almost every day that report actual locations and catches you can get daily catch reports from point conception to san martin island 365 days a year fishdope.com is for everyone whether you have your own boat fish on your friend's boat or a sport boat Fishdope.com has online planning tools, moon phase, tides, hot bite icons, and more. So bottom line is, if you don't have Fishdope.com, well, you're probably missing a lot of bites. Membership costs less than $50 of gas, and that's for the entire year. That's right, one year. What a bargain. Plus, use the special code to save $20 on a new Fishdope.com membership. Check it out today. Fishdope.com. Catch more fish, burn less fuel. Hey, it's happening. Next weekend, 
You bet. It is the West's oldest and biggest yacht show. It is the Newport Boat Show in Newport Beach, California. Location for the ultimate big boats. You can spend the day touring some of the finest yachts in the West, indeed. So, Killer, there's over 200 boats in the show. They have trawlers, motor yachts, cruisers, sport fishers, sailboats, so much. You'll find a wide variety of new products and services, too, that help making a boat a more enjoyable experience. Indeed. Starts Thursday, April 27th, goes through Sunday the 30th at Lido Marina Village. Very convenient, easy to find. Rain or shine, noon to 7 uh, on Thursday, Friday and Saturday, 10 to 7, Sunday, 10 to 5. The admission is just 15 bucks. It's super inexpensive for such a rad show. Kids that are 12 and under are free. Obviously, they do active military discounts, and they offer free off-site parking and shuttle service. Free off-site parking. That's a big deal. So check it out, NewportBeachBoatShow.com for more information and directions. Newport Beach Boat Show coming up this coming Thursday, the 27th through the 30th at Lido Marino Village. What a tuna and yellowtail season last year. Many say the best in 30 years. Could this season be even better? Don't be caught without the right gear. Now is the time to stock up on the trolling lure that proved to be the best. X-Wrap Magnum by Rapala. Every X-Wrap Magnum runs perfect right out of the box. They all have extreme action and a controlled deep diving aggressive swimming motion. The large diving lip partners with premium VMC hooks and an irresistible rattle. The X-Wrap Magnum by Rapala can be trolled at high speeds without rolling or kicking out at depths to 15 feet. Bottom line, the x rap Magnum is the ultimate trolling lure for Southern California and Baja saltwater fishing. With a textured translucent body, internal holographic foil, and 3D holographic eye, x rap Magnums are irresistible to saltwater game fish. Available in a variety of colors and sizes. No matter what you choose, the fish can't resist x rap Magnum by Rapala. Ask your local tackle dealer which is the hottest color and size and start catching more fish. See the Entire line at Rapala.com. Welcome back to Let's Talk Hook Up on the Mighty 1090. All right, phones are packed. They want to talk to Captain Ryan Bastian from the San Diego. So let's jump into it. You got it. Well, we always say the first time callers go right to the front of the line, and that's the case with Ian this morning calling us from Ventura. Good morning, and thanks for being a first time caller with us. Good morning, gentlemen. How are you doing? Doing great. Good morning. Hey, um, I just wanted to say that I fished with Ryan last summer, last July, and uh, what an outstanding captain and uh, crew and just complete operation he's got down there. It's uh, really, really refreshing to see, and I'll be back down this August to fish with him. Thank you, Ian. Fantastic. Why you wait bet. till August? Um, I have, Come I have on a question for both Rick and Ryan. Um, you know, I have a couple of Talica 12s and um, a 700M, 700H, but I'm looking for that 50, 60-pound rig that you guys are talking about for that that bigger bluefin what would you what would you folks suggest you got the right reel yeah. as far as i'm concerned uh those talicas are are amazing they they can land as as big a fish as you're going to hook around here um you know it kind of depends on what you're doing with it as far as how much spectra you're going to put on it when we're fishing those flat falls we like to have a lot of spectra you don't want much stretch in your line uh, so we like to fill it practically all the way up with spectra. When we're fishing a bait on it, I like the guys that have at least 70 feet of mono and then the fluorocarbon leader attached to the mono. It just makes okay. makes for ease of use um, to have that boat length of mono there. And plus, when you do hook one of these big ones, unless you've upgraded your hooks and, and done a lot of stuff, you want that stretch that the mono provides, especially if the weather's a little choppy or something. It makes it a lot easier to land those bigger fish. Those blue fins, too, it seems like when they're at color, they're so much less predictable than a yellow fin. A yellow fin just circles and spins up. And, I mean, sure, you got to pull on them, and they're tough to catch and everything when they're circling up, but, but they're at least predictable. And those blue fins will just come up on an oval, or they'll be on their side, or they're swimming upright, or you think that it's nice and mellow and everything's good, then they flare their gill plates and shake their head and change direction and shoot around. It's like they're so much less predictable, and that mono gives you, you, know, it, it gives you so much more room for error. Like you say, they they seem to be smarter. I think they're sm- I think they're <laughs> smarter than us. I on I honestly do. You know, we we get propped. We get guys taken into the propellers more with bluefin tuna than any other fish that we fish for. And good fishermen. Yeah. You know, I see guys that that have caught thousands and thousands of fish are very very good at it. Get taken into the props. It's like what what was that? Yeah. How did that happen? Yeah. You know, it's because like Rick said, they're very unpredictable, especially at color. They start to swim upright. 
You, you've been pulling on them for 30 minutes. You think they're done, and then all of a sudden they get upright and swim the whole length of the boat right next to the right next to the boat. It's like, geez, what was that? Well, what are you doing? What are you doing? Yeah, we won. We got you. <laughs> don't don't, be, don't do stuff like that. <laughs> yeah, but that's even further time when you need to listen to your crew. Yeah, yeah. You, you do. Those guys are out there every single day. They've 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 seen a lot of stuff happen in the last the couple, in the last couple of years. Yeah. Ian, hey, enjoyed uh, having you on the show, and uh, please be a uh, first. T- thanks for being a first time caller, and please join us again from Ventura. Hey, I want to mention the uh, senior anglers of Oceanside are going to host a live bait tuna seminar on May the second. That's coming up in a couple weeks here with Captain Art Taylor from The Searcher. We're, as a matter of fact, going to have Art on the show that following Saturday. So we're looking forward to having Art, and he's going to share his 30-plus years of experience uh, on Southern California and Baja fishing right there at the Senior Anglers of Oceanside's uh, meeting there. Oceanside Senior Center is the place. Uh, at 9 a.m. is the meeting, and it's open to anglers all 50 and over. Visit osanglers.org for more information on that event. So let's go ahead and jump back into those jam-packed phones. You right? got it. We're going to go up to Wildemar and talk to Cameron now. Good morning, Cameron. Welcome to Let's Talk Hookup. Hi, Cameron. Hey, good morning, gentlemen. How you doing? Great. Great, Cameron. Hey, uh, Captain Ryan, I just wanted to say uh, thank you and your crew for doing an outstanding job taking care of my 12-year-old son. Uh, we've been on the boat where it's been, you know, a $100 boat ride, and we've been on the boat where we've actually caught some yellowtail a couple weeks ago. And I'm in the bow, and my son's in the stern, and we're looking at each other, and he's shooting me the thumbs-up sign. <laughs> and uh, that's just one of those special father-son moments that I'll always cherish, and I really appreciate that. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you for uh, coming. Hey, and let me tell you this. Whatever you pay a motto and Matt, your deckhand, you need to triple that because <laughs> those we are don't the, pay them. Those are some, <laughs> <laughs> I just they just want to go fishing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we pay them in cheeseburgers. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. That, yeah. They are some good dudes, and they, they make the trip very personable because they remember your name. Yep. And uh, public service-wise, that's a big deal. And, I, and uh, me and my son both really appreciate that. So thanks for what you're doing. Keep it up, and hope to see you soon back out in the water. Cameron, how much did uh, Brawler request for you to uh, put a, publicly announce his request for pay raise uh, on the radio? I'm just, I'm just curious, you know. <laughs> He's just a good dude, man, and he always, he always uh, calls me by my first name and – at check in, and that's really cool, man. I really appreciate that because he remembers me. So that's, that's awesome. A good, that's a good thing. Yep. Yeah, good dudes important. for sure. Yeah, indeed. Hey, Cameron, you are up in Wildemar. Are you listening to us on the Mighty Ten Ninety, or are you listening to us on the app? Mighty Ten Ninety, baby. All right, <laughs> very good. Thanks a lot, Cameron. Appreciate the call this morning. That does free up. Okay, boys. Eight seven 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 nine two ten ninety. Been a busy morning. There's your shot to get through right now. You got it. Let's go down and talk to Ed. He's calling us from Mira Mesa this morning. Good morning, Ed. Welcome to the show. Hey, hi, guys. My, my question, I actually have a couple of questions for Ryan there. Uh, what type of gear that, you know, I need to take as far as, you know, line size and that? And also, can you explain kind of a, there's no such thing as a typical day, but when, when you start out, do you put out the trolling lines and, and what can you expect on something like that? Yeah, as far as what you could expect right now on these trips that we're doing, you could expect at least a two-hour ride out in the morning. You know, We need to get out there at least 20 miles right now. At that point, we'll put the trolling feathers out. We've been trolling a lot lately, we, uh, mainly because I, I want to see if someone's going to snag that first albacore. That we haven't caught too much on the troll, but we do like to have trolling feathers out just in case something decide, you know, an albacore or a bluefin bite it from time to time, but not very often. And also to check kelp patties. You know, a lot of times if it's a small kelp patty and we don't want to waste time, time management on these offshore three-quarter day trips is so important. If we were to stop on every tiny kelp patty that we saw, we'd be out of time. We would not have covered enough water, and it would really affect us. So time management is very important. We troll past small kelps to see if there's any fish on them. Lately, the fish have been 35 to 45 miles. So we'll start looking at about 20, 25 miles. But really, it's been very obvious when you're in the zone. There's a there's a nice water edge. 
There's huge bird schools. It's it's really obvious when you're in the zone. And so we're trying to straight line it for that zone to maximize our time there. Once we're there, we'll slow the boat down a little bit, start glassing around for birds and looking for schools on the sonar. And, you know, like Cameron mentioned in the in the call before, he's been out with us when we've caught a bunch of yellowtail. He's also been on the boat when it's a boat ride. And that is just the nature of the beast when you're fishing offshore. I tell the guys every morning, that this is high risk, high reward fishing. It's there's no way around it. We we cannot change that equation. So we may go out there and the very first stop of the day, catch all the fish we want and head for home by eleven in the morning. <laughs> or we may go out there and never see a fish. It's there, just reality. There's no fallback on rockfish on a trip like that. No, there's no fallback on rockfish. There's no bailing out going to the island. It's we're going offshore and we're either gonna we're either gonna do it or you're gonna enjoy a nice uh, boat ride day on the ocean. <laughs> which, which to a lot of people come to the wheelhouse after a day like that and they tell me, hey man. Thanks for the effort. I really enjoyed this. I um, I got out of the office. I got to spend the day with my family, my kid, and yeah, we all want to go home with a sack full of fish. But a lot of times, it just doesn't happen. So Heck yeah, man. I mean, to be able to just spend a day on the ocean, man, on yeah. San Diego, a yeah. beautiful boat with yep. a great crew, and have the opportunity. The opportunity. That's great what we're selling. Yeah. I, I've been fishing with Captain Ryan and those guys on the San Diego for so long, and that's one of the things that I like the most about that boat is that's your guys' attitude for everything. I mean, you. You know, P. Obviously, you mentioned it. You know, there's no fallback for rockfish, even when it's yellowtail time at the Coronado Islands. The amount of time that that happens is so infrequent. You, know, you guys are always pushing and always, always working towards you know the ultimate prize, whatever the ultimate game fish is, whether it's a bluefin at offshore or it's a yellowtail at the Coronado Islands. You put so much effort into that, and and I I can't tell you how many times I've been on the boat where. Uh, other times, you know, back in the days before that, you would have already given up trying to catch, uh, you know, trying to sonar up one school of yellowtail, and all right, we're just going to, we got to put something in this axle, so we'll go rock fishing. And then in the last hour, get a stop for 15, and then a stop for 20, and then get a stop for 12. And next thing you know, you've got, yeah. you know, you've got 50 some yellow, you know what I mean? In the, in the last hour, where most other people would have bailed out and gone for the easy, you know, you guys are always pushing for it. That's the thing that I like the most about fishing that boat. Booger and the guys don't mess around. You're always, always, always trying to catch whatever the top game fish to be caught at the time is. I'm always amazed at, at how small the difference is between success and failure out there, catching-wise. You know, that a lot of times it's Matt saw one bird out of the corner of his eye. You know, we're driving along, and he goes, whoa, I, I just saw a turn bird over there, or I saw a little tiny splash. We drive over there, and it's a huge school, and we get a drift for 80. Wow. Even though we had right. zero fish on the boat. So that's why we're the only thing we can control out there is our effort. That's it. That's all we got is our effort. So we try as hard as we can until the bitter end. And it's risky. It would be easier a lot of days to just say, hey, whoa, it's 2 o'clock. We have zero fish on the boat. We're going to go catch some bass or some rockfish. Yeah. But that's not how we not do your it. Style. That's yeah. not a, I'm not afraid to, to come back to the dock with nothing. I'm, yeah. I'm, I've done it enough now where... That's just how we have to fish because the difference between catching and not catching is so small. Yeah, and, and the thing is, you mentioned, uh, Matt, finding a bird. That's days and days on the water and experience of, of being on the water every day of watching those small little nuances that may make the difference between the big day and the no day. Yeah, it's it's and it changes week to week, too. Mm -hmm. You know, when I, I take Sundays and Mondays off usually, and on Tuesday when I come back, to the boat, I'll spend the first hour of the ride out talking to Matt, learning what kind of birds, what kind of birds and what kind of bird behavior has been putting us on fish. You know, the, when I came back this last Tuesday, on Monday they were fishing these huge shearwater schools. That's a type of bird, and, and that wasn't happening the week before. And I saw one through the binoculars, and I went, "Huh, that looks funny. It's a thousand shearwaters in one spot." And I asked Matt. Are you guys fishing big, huge clouds of sheer waters? And he went, oh, yeah, drive that way. <laughs> go, go that way. And, and we did, and he was right. And so it, it's paying attention. You know, it's the guys on deck paying attention. It's it's communication between Cameron and myself. And it, uh, it's such a small difference between catching a lot and catching nothing. You said nuances on birds, too. I mean, think about what those guys see every day, the, you know, the boogers and the brawlers and, the, and, and Cameron and, like, the difference between a bird flying one direction and, and and then the bird like fluttering his wings one way one time something different. I mean, to ninety percent of us, we just that's just a bird flying, and, and you know those guys can see that and realize that there's something you know 
you're going to pass a lot of birds of the day, and not all of them are on schools of fish, but one of them might act one way and have a ton, you know, ten tons of bluefin underneath them. Right. Yeah. Bird learning that bird behavior is, is a big thing. You know, like Rick, a lot of times they're just flying and traveling, and you know, they're fishing themselves. They're the best fishermen on the water, and uh, you know, you can't just go to. They have a bird's eye view. They have a bird's eye view. Yeah, yeah. You can't just go to every bird you see and start fishing and expect to catch everything. The birds have to be acting right. Yeah, and you learn that by time on the water. Just time on the water, yeah. That's all hey, it is. thanks a lot for the phone call this morning. I want to mention big announcement. We're getting close to the very first San Diego County Ford Dealers Live Remote. Yeah. It's going to happen May 20th. We moved the date a little bit up, May the 20th at NC News 4. Nice, that's the favorite Captain kickoff. And Mark Wheeler uh, always uh, initiates our Encinitas Ford is uh, is a great place, and a, and Mark is a great guy, and we are going to be doing our first San Diego County Ford dealer live broadcast Saturday, May 20th. I had to check with the cowboy to make sure he could be there, and he's right. going to be there. Good. So we're all good there. And you're going to have the chance to win two grand prizes this year. The one prize where you're going to win the Hobie Mirage Drive Kayak from Fastlane Kayaks and a trip to Cedros Kayak Fishing on Cedros Island. That's one prize. That's crazy. Second prize, trip to Palma de Cortez, including round-trip airfare on Alaska Airlines and fishing at Palma de Cortez. That's so rad. Two grand prizes this year for our casting contest as well as our random draw. So An entry fee? It doesn't cost a thing. You awesome. just show up. Yeah, just hang out. All you do is come show up and hang out. So mark your calendar, Saturday, May 20th. Encinitas Ford, we'll be talking more about that. All right. Well, with that, it's time to find out what's biting in the Baja. We got the cast man, Richard Castaneda from Cast Tour, standing by today. Catch Sport sponsored by, speaking of the East Cape, Spork Scorpion Sport Fishing, featuring two of the best boats in the East Cape, a 35-foot Cabo Yachts, the El Regalo, and a 26-foot twin outboard center console, the Scorpion. They also offer beach fishing, which is really cool. The professionals at Scorpion Fishing are equipped, equipped and determined to make your fishing dreams come true. Check Scorpion fishing.com for the finest charters in the East Cape. And let's talk to the cast man, Richard Castaneda from Castor's Buenos Dias. Cast man. Hey, cast man. Good morning, cast man. Yes, sir. Cast man. Good morning. Wake up. <laughs> Hello. I'm here. All right. Talk to me. Thank goodness you're here, cast right? man. <laughs> I want to know what's going on in Baja. Oh, man, I'll tell you. Things uh, are, are okay. They're they're not stellar, but but good. Uh, Cabo San Lucas there in San Jose del Cabo, uh, once again, that uh, inside the Sierra Cortez there, up around Punta Gorda, the, the fleets are out of San Jose del Cabo, the new marina there, are uh, scoring on uh, yellowfin tuna there at Vinorama. Uh, 15 to 30-pound fish uh, using live sardinas, dead sardinas, and, and uh, chunk squid. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> oh, my goodness. <coughs> I think I went down the wrong pipe there, but anyway. <laughs> Anyway, there's uh, yeah, right, uh, a lot of surviving on us there. Yeah. yeah, I'm okay, man. I'm okay. Okay, okay, good, good. All right. Anyway, you, Get, uh, take a shot of rum. You'll be better. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, a few Dorado in the mix and uh, a few striped marlin. Uh, they're seeing a lot of striped marlin. They're just not uh, not hungry. And so they're a bit, the guys that want marlin are getting pretty frustrated. You know, they're seeing the fish, presenting baits, and they just won't take them. <clears throat> Gosh darn. Probably the, uh, the hot spot for this, uh, this week is Cancun. Uh, a lot of Atlantic sales right now. They're doing really well on the Atlantic sales. Uh, also getting king mackerel, uh, blackfin tuna, a few dorado in the mix. But uh, this is that time of year. Uh, they always say April, May, and June, kind of the peak months for Cancun, for the, especially for the sailfish. And also getting a few white marlin. Um, Mazatlan, uh, getting a few, uh, actually getting more striped marlin than, than Cabo, but still not that good. And they're also getting a mix of yellowfin tuna. Uh, for the fleet there, nothing big, you know, school-sized fish, 15 to 25 pounds. Um, so it, otherwise, uh, nothing really crazy going on. I think we're getting into that that time frame when things are going to switch. And uh, so I'd say predict any day now we're going to see things start to happen there. But uh, anyway, that's the report for this week. Hopefully I'll have some stellar reports coming up here the next uh, week or two. Um, and otherwise, uh Heading for Christmas Island in the June. That trip is sold out, and um, we also got some space open on our Pesca Panama of Correction Tennessee trip, uh, June 19 to 26. Anybody wants to join me on that trip? 
uh, and we've started, we opened up our uh, PESCA Panama trip for next April. Um, and, of course, that's always a fabulous trip. I think I've got uh, two two boats left on that. That's uh, it? So, wow. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, most of the guys that go usually want to sign up right away and go back next year. So um, as of now, I've got two boats. And uh, anybody wants to join us, whether you're single or a pair of you or three of you, you can give me a call. And, uh, like I said, if you're single, I'll team you up with somebody. Otherwise, uh, give me a call at Cast Tours at 800-593-6510 or on the web at www.casttours.com. And, but Pete, I just uh, also remembered I got one spot open for our El Salto trip, uh, February 10 to 14. Uh, anybody wants to join us on that trip. But uh, otherwise, uh, things are good, and I'll talk to you guys next week. Awesome. Well, great information, Cash Man. Appreciate that. And, boy, had such a good time fishing El Salto with you. I highly recommend somebody go check out that trip because it is an absolute blast. Well, Cash, great job compiling an awesome report for us as always. And we'll look forward to talking to you next Saturday. You got it, Ricky. Talk to you then. All right, Thanks, you Cash got Man. it. I want to remind everybody, too, that scorpionsportfishing.com, awesome spot for that East Cape. I know we were talking about that, that Twin Outboard Center console. Such a perfect day boat with Ooh. East Cape fishing being a lot of – you know, day fishing, quick in, quick out. Think about how nice it is having that twin outboard of Scorpion Sport Fishing. And, to go and his Cobble 35 isn't too bad either. <laughs> I'll take yeah, both of them just fine. Sure, indeed. ScorpionSportFishing.com. Great guys. All right. Well, hey, let's jump right back into the phones. They're getting packed up. And we're going to talk to Bruce, who's calling us from Lemon Grove this morning. Good morning, Bruce. Welcome to Let's Talk Hookup. Hey, good morning, guys. You're Hi, Bruce. About the, hey, talk about the size of the reel that you want to use out there. Is a Pelica 20 too big? Um. That, that's that's pretty big. You could probably use a reel that size for, you know, maybe flat fall fishing. But the thing we've noticed about those flat falls is is they get bit better on a smaller reel, a lighter spool. You know, they, yeah, they you know they sink a lot better uh, on a lighter spool, smaller reel. They they just do. So I, I think a Talica 20, you know, probably is a little much for what we're doing now. Okay, Thank cool. you very much. Now you go to a 16s, what you're thinking? Um, six, most of the fishing we've been doing lately is 25-pound test fly line sardine. That, that's the most popular rig right now. We always tell the people to have a heavier rod on standby, sure. a 40, 50, or 60-pound rod on standby, just in case we see the bigger ones. But for the kelp paddy yellowtail and for the 20 to 40-pound bluefin that we've been catching, a Talica 16, a Trinidad 16 uh, with 25 pound test fluorocarbon and a size one live bait hook, you'll be covered. That's but cool. fishing the flat fall, what do you want to fish? Fishing a flat fall, I, I like those uh, Talica 12s. Um, you know, something like we had a guy catch a 90 pounder the other day on a Trinidad 16A. Ooh. You know, that narrow Trinidad, yeah. and, and he, he got it. It reels got power. power. It reels got power. And yeah. what pound test? He was using, like, 65-pound spectra to a short piece of 80-pound fluorocarbon. There you go. That's yeah. so rad. The difference. Hey, thanks a lot for the phone call this morning. Hey, when we come back, we got a lot more Let's Talk Hookup coming your way. Phone lines are absolutely packed up, and we're going to be taking your calls. More Let's Talk Hookup on the Mighty 1090. All the officers. Hey everybody, this is Captain Dwayne Diego, four-pack charter captain, here to talk to you about Parker Boats and the good folks at West Coast Marine. When it came time to start Pinnacle Sport Fishing and get my own boat, there was only one choice. I wanted a Parker, and there's a real good reason for it, the fishability and seaworthiness. I've been fishing on Parkers for years now, and I know the abuse they can take. Parker Marine builds a heavy-duty, industrial-strength boat, probably overbuilt, but that's what I need when we're out 12 hours a day, over 300 days a year, running charters. The guys at West Coast Marine built me one heck of a fishing boat. Boat. From the custom tower with steering and throttle controls to the backup bait pump system, my Parker 2520 XLD will deliver me to the fishing grounds reliably and safe. Take it from me. If you're ready for a new Parker at a fair, upfront, honest deal, you need to see Kevin Kelly at West Coast Marine, located at 1555 Newport Boulevard in Costa Mesa, or check them out and their inventory and information online at westcoastmarine.com. 
Hey, when you take your Parker boat from West Coast Marine out, you want to be equipped with the right equipment, and that's Shimano Rods and Reels and Shimano Flat Falls. Dude, I got everything you just named to the T. That's what we, we fish our 25 Parker, and, and I can tell you there is not a better lure for offshore tuna fishing than the Flat Fall. And the big thing, I say it all the time in the shop, it's one thing to hear us tell you about it, but I see it every night working at Fisherman's Landing, and it's not just all the customers grabbing Flat Falls. Every crew member and every captain recommend that lure when you're going fishing offshore right now, period. Yeah, and Captain Ryan Boschen, what's the hot setup for and what size flat fall should people be buying? For the bigger grade bluefin we're catching right now, we've been using the 200 and the 250 gram flat falls, okay. the big ones. On Italica 12 or Italica 16, spooled up with some 65 pound Power Pro and you're good to go. Yeah, and does color matter? Yeah, we've been we've been getting a lot of bites on that uh, chartreuse kind of glow in the dark color. That okay. that's been the hot color so far this year. All right, if, but other colors get bit too. Absolutely, no as, as long as it has some silver in it, you got a shot. There you go. So check it out, Flat Falls and Shimano rods and reels at your local Shimano deal. Check out Shimano.com. Walk down the docks these days, and guys are eager to show off their expensive new coolers. Makes me wonder what the world's coming to if a guy can spend $500 on a cooler. Oh, well, what do I know? I know this. Those new coolers are a heck of a lot better than the old coolers I used to trot around. In fact, that's what got Paul Cabellin at Angle USA thinking about a better cooler in the first place. His Angle coolers were designed with two inches of insulation and a tight-fitting seal to keep things ice cold for up to 10 days. He introduced an integrated hinge so the lid wouldn't break off, durable latches with stainless hardware, and ergonomic handles. Most of all, he priced his gear fairly so a guy could count on getting his money's worth. If you need a new cooler, take a look at Angle Cooler before you buy anything else. It's the original. It's built to last. And when it comes to performance, you can count on ice lasting longer and your catch staying colder than anything you've ever tried before. Fifth Avenue Insurance has a new name. It's Snap Insurance. Still providing anglers and boaters with the best in boat insurance and the lowest rates. The experts at Snap Insurance will make sure your boat and property are covered right. Traveling to Mexico? Snap has you covered. You can even work with your agent to wrap your home and auto with your boat policy to save even more. Call them for for advice on your current boat policy or any of your insurance needs, Snap Insurance, 800-527-6617 or snapins.com. That's S-N-A-P-P-I-N-S.com. Welcome back to Let's Talk Hookup on the Mighty 1090. Hey, I want to remind you today, Seakeeper Demo Days continue at Dana Landing yeah. in Mission Bay. So I'm going to head out uh, down there right after the show and go test drive that contender 32 and check out that sea keeper it's an amazing deal uh, let me just throw this at you i don't know if that's a great idea i <laughs> rode that demo boat twice i did it once with uh with berkeley and then went again uh after the show getting to ride on that boat and knowing what it's like to have a device on your boat that makes your boat stop rocking and then getting on to any other boat ever in the world that doesn't have it. You're instantly like, what am I doing? What am yeah. I, a savage? Like, this is ridiculous. <laughs> it is unbelievable yeah. that there is a device that you can push a button and your boat stops rocking. It's crazy. And it works. It works so good. It's not yeah. a hype thing. It's not like, oh, kind. I kind of notice a difference, like one of those things. Yeah, it. You push a button and your boat stops moving. Think about Jeez. glassing with binoculars or just all day long rock and roll, and it stops Everything. Yeah. It is you wanna, unbelievable. You should walk, go down there and check it out. Can I get one for the San Diego? Uh-huh. <laughs> I would imagine, you know, <laughs> if they make them. I don't yeah. know if I'd be as tired at the end of the night. Oh, it's, have oh, that's those. unreal. Well, if you want to ride, they're gonna, the Sea Keeper Demo Day going on today and tomorrow at Dana Landing. And the next week at the Newport Boat Show, you want to take a test ride. They say take a ride, be amazed, and it truly is true. Call Berkeley at 310 310- Five zero two zero zero three four, or just show up today or yeah. tomorrow at Dana Landing in Mission Bay and uh, take a ride. Be amazed, Sea Keeper. Highly recommend trying it. It, it is but unbelievable. It, even if you're not in the market for one, just do it. It's just so cool. Check it out, it, and you will be. It defies all of your common sense of what the ocean and boats and things should be. You just yep. won't believe that it can work like that. It's so cool. Yep. Got to you. Got to see it. Yeah, indeed. Let's go ahead and jump into the phones. Harry in La Jolla, you're up next on Let's Talk Hookup. Good morning, Harry. Good morning, Harry. Good morning. You guys are so thorough that I know that by the time I get on, more often than not, you answer most of my questions. 
Uh, Booger, I want to tell you that how much I really enjoy fishing with you and your crew. Uh, I have one small problem, and, I, and I, I'm addressing this to the fishermen who are listening. I get very bothered at the end of the day to see how little some of those tips are. And I've been doubling my tip, uh, and, and I've decided that I'm giving it out in the very beginning because the tip is really a function of the efforts put in and not the result. Um, and I wish fishermen would not pay according to what they catch, but according to the experience that they're having. Thank you, Harry. And Booger, Booger, you said one other thing. I, I listened to you uh, talking about some of the guys going out with not uh, sufficient equipment for the bigger fish, and I've, I've got my 50-pounder um, uh, and my 80-pounder set up now, too. But I've matched uh, my, um, my Spectra with my uh, uh, Top line uh, and the uh, the fluorocarbon. You said something about eighty pounds. Should I put eighty on all of them? No, not not on all of them. O- only a rod that you think you know the rod that you're going to grab when the hundred pounders are around the boat. That that's that's it. You know, got it. Bluefin have sharp teeth, comparatively speaking. You know, sharper teeth than a yellowfin tuna. Much more teeth than a yellow tail. And so we do need a chafing guard there. A lot of times when they eat those flat falls, they just come through and they swallow the whole thing. We'll have to dig the thing out of the fish's gills when we get the fish on the boat. So on those flat falls, even on the poppers and on the surface iron, we'd like to have a short piece of heavy fluorocarbon. But for your live bait rig, no, you don't You don't need 80-pound. You, you know, have a 25-pound fly line bait rod ready to go. Have a 40-pound fly line bait rod ready to go. Then have one rod that is specifically designed to catch a 100-pounder, and the most common lure for that right now is the Shimano flatfall. If you're like Harry and you're getting ready to set up your flatfall and put a leader on it, how do you go about it? Do you just tie Do you tie your line to the flatfall and then tie your leader line to your main line, or do you use a swivel or a ring? What's the best way, do you think, to set the leader part of it up if you're going to do your flatfall? Yeah, I mean, you probably are doing it in the tackle shop all night long for these guys, and the Seaforth tackle shop is doing that too. They have pre-made leaders up there. If you don't want to deal with it, they have pre-made 80-pound, and I think they even have 100-pound fluorocarbon leaders ready to go. So when you buy a flatfall at the Seaforth tackle shop, you can also purchase a short little uh, chafing guard leader of heavy fluorocarbon right there. And, and I think there is a swivel up there. Um, there might be a split. I, I don't know exactly how they set it up. When I'm doing it on my rod, I just tie uh, Tony Pena knot um, and connect the fluorocarbon like that. So you just tie from your main line or your top or whatever it is right to the heavy line that's on your flat fall. Yeah. And then tie tie the flat fall to the, to the line. Yes. Cool. Yep. All right. And how do you do it in, in the tackle store? Uh, just like books said, I mean, a bunch of different ways. I think our, our favorite way, we usually use either 80 or 100-pound fluoro, and we typically crimp the line to the swivel just because, you know, knots start to get pretty big when you're when you're doing 100-pound or 80-pound. So we'll usually crimp it just to make it a little smaller. Whether the stealthiness makes a difference or not, who knows, but it looks a little better. And then You're going to put an inline swivel in, we, so you're going to connect, you're going to crimp or tie to, to the, flat, the fall. flat fall. Then you put two, three feet. Yeah, probably two feet, like 18 to 24 inches, something like that. And then either an action ring, which is just a welded ring, or a small swivel. And then you can, you know, tie whatever your favorite regular knot is that you would tie a hook onto the end of the swivel. All right. Very good. Good way to do it. That way you have the chafe guard, and you do hook that big one, and he starts to shake his head. You're not going, ah! Yeah, you can feel them rubbing their teeth on, on your line when you've been yeah. fighting them for a while. It's a scary feeling. And you see those. That's the thing that drives me so crazy. You see those things at color, and they're still down, and you're like four or five circles away, and you see them like a yellow fin. You always see them on their side. You know, you see the whole silver side of the fish. You look down, you see those blue fins. They're they're black because they're still <laughs> upright. And then you literally see like the red in their gill plates flare out, and they're shaking their head as hard as they can like that. Mother is trying to get away right yeah, now. Like just, is. yeah, just come in. I'm, yeah. t- I'm tired already. Like Ryan says, smarter than us. Yeah. Smarter than uh, us. Like, <laughs> sometimes, <laughs> Some, sometimes we win. They let their, we're smarter than they. They let their guard down from time to time, and I, t- like I told you at the beginning of the show, the next time they let their guard down, and, <laughs> and we're catching a few. 
you're going to see the San Diego pull into the dock at 2 a.m. Yeah. Because we're fishing them till dark. All right. Well, next time that happens, I want you to give a call to the radio show and say, hey, we got them. Yeah. We've been through so many days of frustration and pain with them that the next time they let their guard down, we're either going home when the whole entire boat has a limit or where the sun goes away. Yeah. Maybe you better tar- take Dart with you. Then he might be the lucky charm. Yeah, I wouldn't go that far. <laughs> hey, thanks a lot for the call this morning. Hey, I want to remind you about two great events. Events for the Coastal Conservation Association of California, CCA California. The Los Angeles chapter is going to have their barbecue at the Long Beach Rod and Gun Club on Pacific Avenue in Long Beach. It's Saturday, May 20th, the same day we're having our live remote at Encinitas Ford. Uh, and uh, I'll tell you what, 1030 to 3, so you can come to Encinitas Ford and have a chance to win those great uh, prizes and then head on over to the big barbecue for CCA. Uh, the prizes are unbelievable. And, uh, of course, supporting CCA is so, so important for all of us out there. So that's coming up Saturday, May 20th. Uh, check ccacal.org for more information. Contact Bilotti and uh, get your tickets or raffle reservation. CCA Cal L-A-L-A, L-L-A. CCA Cal LA at yahoo.com is John Bellotti's email there. And then also, of course, they have the big Battle of the Bays, the kayak fishing tournament, doing great now, a lot of sign-ups, and you should join this Saturday, May 6th in Mission Bay and Saturday, June 10th in Santa Monica Bay. Again, all that information's on the CCA Cal website. And when we come back, we got a lot more Let's Talk. coming in another full hour. We're going to check in with the catch reports, find out what's biting up and down the beach. Lots coming up. You stay tuned. It's Let's Talk Hookup on the Mighty 1090. This is Chelsea from Dana Landing in Mission Bay. We are truly the one-stop shop for a great day on the water. Looking for a fishing charter? Dana Landing has you covered with the blackjack. Perfect up to four anglers, or the impulse up to six anglers in comfort and style. Dana Landing has a huge tackle shop with everything you need to go fish bay bass, tuna, or marlin, and our staff will dial you in. We even have Mexican and California fishing licenses and reel repair. Our deli at Dana Landing is a local's favorite with all the food, ice, and beverages you need. Hey, need freshwater tackle? Head to East County Bait and Tackle, the ultimate in rods and reels, the latest freshwater lures and live bait. ECBT has a stop second to none when it comes to sharing their passion for fishing. ECBT is at the end of the 67 Freeway on Maple View and Lakeside. And Dana Landing is next to the Dana Launch Ramp in Mission Bay. Check out danalandy.com for more details. This is Captain Tim Ekstrom from the Long Range Vessel Royal Star. With my partners Randy Toussaint and Brian Sims, we have set the bar for the long range fishing experience. A spring 8 day, summer 5 day, or a fly down, fly back 11 day winter trip, we deliver the highest quality long range voyage you will find. From our premium RSW fish storage to our top of the line chefs and crew, Royal Star distinguishes itself from all others. Want to grab a spot on the Royal Star? Check us out at Royal Star Sports. Sportfishing.com or call Tracy at 619-224-4764. Here's John Ireland for Rancho Leonero. Rancho Leonero is very family oriented. People have brought their children down and now they're bringing their children. It's not unusual to have three generations of family at the hotel. Grandpa, dad, and uh, normally son, sometimes daughters. The families come back year after year and it's a safe place for the kids. It's small, it's intimate right on the water, two miles of beachfront. The water's very shallow in front. There's no currents to speak of, no waves. We have child care, $10 a day for a babysitter. Security is high at Rancho Lane now. It's really unnecessary, but it adds up comfort level. And we really do encourage the families. It's a great place for family reunions, family get-togethers, weddings. We do it all. 1-800-646-2252, 646-Baja. And RanchoLeonero.com, there's nowhere that I could think of to have the same atmosphere and the same experience that you get at Rancho Leonero. We love families. Let's talk candidly about long-range fishing. This is Captain Frank DePresti of the Royal Polaris and the Shogun. Nowhere on earth will you find a fleet of long-range boats like we have in San Diego. We are fortunate to have several top-notch operations to take you to the most productive fishing grounds in the world. We all offer good food, comfortable staterooms, 
huge bait capacity, and top-of-the-line fish-finding electronics. So why would you choose the Royal Polaris or the Shogun for your next long-range trip? What sets us apart from the rest? It's pretty simple. The boats, the crew, and the service. From the moment you arrive at Fisherman's Landing, the service begins. We help you load your gear and do everything possible to get beginners or seasoned veterans ready to catch fish. When it's time to fish, the Royal Polaris and the Shogun have the edge there, too, delivering the two best fishing platforms in the fleet. But don't don't take my word for it. Come fishing with us. If you want the best, it's Royal Polaris and the Shogun. For more information, call 619-226-8030 or on the web at royalpolarissportfishing.com or shogunsportfishing.com. Everyone likes special treatment. You know, kind of feel like a VIP. Well, that's how our listeners are treated at Poway Valley Collision. I have personally heard of several stories of how well our friends Jim and Mary take care of their customers that we sent them. Poway Valley Collision is worth the drive from anywhere in the Southland. We know you may not need them today, but when accidents happen, it pays to go to Poway Valley Collision. And listen to this. Our listeners get a special discount that can save you hundreds of dollars on your car or truck repair. Just tell them you listen to the show and you get the deal. They work with most insurance companies, including Auto Club, Met life Wallanisa and more just bring your car or truck to them and let Poway Valley Collision do the rest I have had my truck repaired at Poway Valley Collision and the job was perfect so get your vehicle fixed right at Poway Valley Collision tell them you listen to let's talk hookup and they'll save you money on your repair Poway Valley Collision 14211 Garden Road in Poway check PowayValleyCollision.com. spring fishing is finally here will it be another banner season will it even be better than last year will it cool off who knows? Fishing is one thing that's impossible to predict. But when it comes to trucks, it's easy to predict who's going to be number one. Ford F-Series, America's best-selling trucks for the last 40 years in a row. Today's Ford trucks combine legendary toughness and state-of-the-art technology, giving you the best of both worlds. That's called being California smart. Ford has put it all together with the F-150 STX package. These trucks are nicely equipped with an EcoBoost engine, hands-free system controls, a reverse-sensing camera, 20-inch wheels, and a lot more, all at a price you're going to love. Now, I can't always predict what the fish are going to do, but I can predict that Ford is going to be on the top once again with trucks like the 2017 F-150 STX package. It's California smart. Stop by your San Diego County Ford dealer today. They'll be glad to hook you up. 